Hello and welcome to this tutorial on using Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio to create a simple database. Now I'm going to assume you've already got a local database set up like I have here. If not, just have a look on YouTube. There are lots of videos on it. It is a straightforward process. So I'm going to get straight into it just using my local DB, MySQL local DB. The reason why I'm making this instead is because there aren't so many easy to follow videos on a simple database creation process in this app. So let's connect and let's get cracking. Right, now when you open in Object Explorer, you're gonna see any database you already have. This is the icon for database. You might not see any at this point if it's the first time, but don't worry, that's fine. You might have a template one, but even so. Now we can right click, create new database that way, but I don't really like that so much. I find it quite restrictive and it's a bit confusing it's not so easy, I find. So we're going to do a scripting approach instead. So if I close that, and if I click on the top level and right click, come down to New Query. Okay, so we're going to make a query to create this database. Now, the first thing we can do, oops, is just start typing Create Database and give it a name. Okay, so I'm making a, a simple web app just to enhance my own learning. And I'm learning Welsh as well, so I'm gonna make a Welsh verbs app, maybe some grammar exercises to show verb tables, grammatical part tenses and so on. And I want to store these verbs in a database. And I will make more videos on the channel as I go about it. So if you wanna follow that journey, do check it out and I'll try and keep updates coming. But for this, I could just do create database and execute that now and it will work, but I don't really want to because I'm not going to have a table and I'm not going to have any data or rows. So instead, let's just think if we create a database, we also want to create a table. And I'll just call this verbs, right, to keep it simple. And we'd also want to insert some data. However, as you can see instantly, it doesn't like this. So if I press control and up scroll on the mouse wheel I'll zoom in a bit and it's expecting it does give me a hint expecting the syntax to be open brackets or as now as I don't want to use because that's just aliasing it to give it another name that's easy to work with what I've actually got to do is to then pass in the data now I've got to think about my table design again I'm not going to run this just yet because I want this tool go together right, just as my demo so if I do if I think the most simple database I can have or most simple table I can have in my database is just gonna have two columns an ID and a verb column so the ID is what I can use then to look up entries in my database so I can call you know number 23 and it will pull out the verb in that row so if I do ID int and this is useful okay if I do identity open brackets one comma one that means that when I create the table it's going to add a number as it goes every time I insert data and I don't need to worry about inserting that number so it just takes care of it and it's going to start at one and increment by one and I also want it to be not null and a primary key Okay, so not null. This is because I do not want it to be null. So it's essentially like empty. And the primary key means then that when I call this database, it's going to look to this, this column in my database as the unique way to find things because, yeah, the unique way to find any entries. So obviously that's not much good without another column. So let's do verb. And in this case, I want it to be letters and words, right? So if I do Envar char, that is useful because my is a foreign language. Mine is Welsh. There's more characters than English. So just Google the type you want for your project. And if I put 30, then that also means that I can have a maximum of 30 characters. 
Now we'll see why this is erring in a moment. Don't worry, just come back to that for a second. The longest I can think of is about 15 characters, but if I double it, then I've got about 30. Okay, it's probably way more than I need, but I don't want it to be unlimited so it could break my database, but I do want it to have a generous amount because it's only characters. You know, it's not going to break it that way. It's only characters, and I don't want people to be hitting the upper limits too easily. And again, I don't want this to be null, and I want this to be unique. Just notice the difference. Primary key is really like a database design thing where you're looking to that column to find something. Unique just means you can't duplicate, have a duplicate entry. So I don't want two rows in my database that have the same verb because that would be pointless. So I'm just making that unique. Now, if I do create database Welsh verbs, and I do use Welsh verbs, and put go in here, that's going to then create the table in the right database. Now something else I can do is I can give myself a custom print message, right? So every time I do something correctly, I can print it out, okay? So let's say database And let's call it by name. I'll copy and paste so I don't cause myself confusion. And let me do that down here as well. And it's not database this time, just where copy and pasting can be confusion, confusing. Let's do verbs, okay? Double click, paste over. And again, what I want to do is really wrap these. Think of these as separate blocks. I can do a begin. And every time I do a begin, I could do an end and a go. Okay, so I could do begin, end, go down here. So this just sort of wraps things up nicely, make sure that they're getting done in blocks. And you can see how this is gives me this expansion option. It treats it as a section. Now, I just want to put the semicolon there, actually to end that. Now this is good, but it's going to error if something already exists with this name. So, and you can use things like ChatGPT or my preferred one is Perplexity AI, just like your usual AI tools. Just ask it to improve a script like this. So I've asked it to do that and it says do this. Okay, so if not exists, so if whatever we're looking for doesn't exist, then do this. So basically we want we don't want to create a duplicate table or try to create a table with the same name because it's not going to work. So let's get into a SQL query. If select star, which means select all from and sys, so the entire system, dot databases, and I can press tab to accept. I'll come back to those IntelliSense pop-up options in a minute where the name equals what, and I've got to put it in single quotes, I've got to be careful, make sure I use the name from here, copy and paste, and it's going to look to see if a table with this name already exists, because if it does, it'll just skip, which is great, that's what I want it to do, and it won't get in here and it won't print that, but if it does, it'll print it, I know it's executed. Okay, so I've got Welsh verbs, same one. Uh, is it is it going to give me a hint here? Okay, that's fine. It's just reading it at the moment. This doesn't exist, but when it reads through, it will. Just remember, you probably wouldn't put all of these in one script in ordinary circumstances, but this is just a simple practice to get you up and running. And I'll do the same down here with my begin statement. Let's put the if not exists, and remember, be careful with the copy and paste, because I want to change that. In this case, it's sys.tables. Now, if I press T, I can use up and down arrows to go through this, and tab to accept, where the name equals, and I'm going to call it verbs. So, just a slight difference, but, you know, when you're looking at this quickly, you can miss these things. So, let's say, if there isn't a table called verbs, then create the table called verbs and give it the two columns ID 
and VIP. And print this if you've done that successfully. Brilliant. So that's all good. And at this point, you might want to press Ctrl and S to save your query. I'd recommend saving it outside of SQL Server Management Studio just because you then know where it is. And I did this one earlier, but I'm going to overwrite it. That's fine. And so our next step then is to actually add in some data. So we can use a simple insert statement. And because I just don't want to make things up, I asked AI to do it for me. You can do the same. You give it, you know, your table info and it'll make some fake data. But in my case, it's actually real data. It's just very basic stuff. So let's put another begin and end. And now what I could do this time actually is if exists. So only start if the table exists. All right, so I could just do that. I'll just get rid of the not. So in this case, only try and insert the data if that table exists. Okay, and then let's uh, copy over my yeah chat GPT generated. Now this is where I've got to be careful because I've changed things when I did a practice run earlier. So let's just be sure. So insert into what's the name of the table? Haha, <laughs> first mistake, verbs. Yep. So actually insert into verbs and the name of the column is verb, right? So you can see how you can get these things mixed up and that's why the error is gone now. So if I hover, you can see it's in master.dbo.verbs column verb and it says, you know, the specifics. That's fine. Now, the AI tool did this for me. Just you probably don't need this on yours, but if you're working with a different language, you would to English, that is. So N just means it's, I think, not a Unicode character. It means that there's, it goes beyond the English character set, basically. So if you just working with English, you can get rid of the N and that's not going to write in. This is just the value that goes in. And remember, this is a comment. And the comma, essentially, all that's in red is what's going in, okay? And because we've set up our table, hopefully, to increment every time an ID column gets written in, it will know to create this as row 1, this as row 2, this as row 3. So it goes up by 1 each time, and it, you don't need to start it on a 1 or a 10, whatever, because I've specified that here. So it's just going to write those in. So the primary key gets written in because of the design. And I've got my Welsh verbs, I've got my comments just to help me, and I've got a print statement. So that's there. And let's see. Now, hopefully this is good. Maybe I can run it through ChatGPT to check again, but I think this is going to work. So I'm just going to Control S to save it. Let's have a look. Let's press Execute. I probably missed something. OK, database created. So I've got my three success messages. It looks okay. I was expecting an issue because it's so easy to miss, you know, something like a semicolon, a comma. And if you do, it will tell you. And if you do get an error, another one to worth worth pointing out <laughs> before I forget is actually to come up to tools to turn on the line numbering. So if it was if I search in here for transact and I come to general line numbers, if you see I've got the line numbers here, but if it tells you, you know, issue with line 84 and you can't see the numbers, it's a nightmare. So just come in, options, transact SQL, general, tick line numbers, and they will, you will be seeing them like I've got them. Okay, so that seems to have worked. Now, whenever you make changes, you really want to just press the refresh to push them through. And if it minimizes, that's a good sign. It's probably changed something. Okay, so if I expand databases, you can see Welsh verbs has come through. And if I expand tables, dbo.verbs. That's a common prefix, dbo, database object, I think, dot verbs. No worries. And let's see columns. Okay, it's got the ID. And you can see PK for primary key and the verb, enval chart. Now, if I want to see that data, the fastest way is to right click and select top 1000 rows. And it does the SQL query for me nicely 
and it returns the rows. Aye, so there you go. You've got your table. Now you can just keep doing scripts on this. So let's say you wanted to do an insert. You can do that and it gives you that base of that insert statement, but you can do it quite a few different ways or you can just write them yourself. But just remember, you've got to follow the best practice and you can see this is erroring because it doesn't like it. That is just a, a placeholder text at the moment and I'd obviously have to put in what I want in here. So my verb, let's say, it's hard to think of any random verb off the top of your head. Um, grando which is to listen oh and I should follow my own rule from earlier and make sure it recognizes it as that type of Unicode character and let's see if this is going to work as well okay one row affected and let me just run this again press F5 and as you see, it's put it in ID 11. Great, because I put in the first 10. And Grandor has come up. A little bit confused. Did I already have it? No, I didn't. Okay, that's fine. And so I've inserted that into there now. You can also, you know, right click to edit the table if you want. You can see the design in here and you can modify these through here or add more rows just through this. This is probably easier than the database creation option, but it's nice to start off with that script and you can use that script again. And remember the script we've done here was pretty basic in terms of it's all together in one. You're usually going to have those separated out, but hopefully it gives you an idea. Now, if you find this useful, check out my other video here for more. Also, come back and check out my project on the Welsh verbs. And let's see how it goes. I hope you find it useful. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again soon.